Hi, good morning to all of you. Today I'm going to discuss a topic on glycolysis. Viva questions that can be asked from glycolysis. I'm Dr. Narendran Koch, Associate Professor, Department of Biochemistry, JNMC. See, I have noted down here the important viva questions that can be asked in your viva or practical. Uh, glycolysis asks us is a very simple topic. So generally we don't ask long questions in the examination. But understanding of this pathway is very, very important. And therefore to test your understanding of the topic, we generally ask in the viva exams. So the areas or the questions that are generally asked in the viva exams I have noted down here like your irreversible steps of glycolysis. So you should be able to tell what are the different irreversible steps of glycolysis. How many irreversible steps are there? You know, there are three irreversible steps. The step one, step three, and step 10. The first step is conversion of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate by hexokinase or glucokinase. That is the first irreversible step. Second is uh, conversion of uh, fructose 1,6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-fructose-6-phosphate, okay. fructose-1,6-bisphosphate. Conversion of uh, fructose-6-phosphate to fructose-1,6-bisphosphate. And the third uh, irreversible step is conversion of phosphenol pyruvate to pyruvate by pyruvate kinase. So these are the three irreversible steps of glycolysis. You should be uh, you should be able to tell. Then energetics. When you talk about energetics of glycolysis, that means how many ATPs are produced in the process of glycolysis. Glycolysis is that means the breakdown of glucose to pyruvate. So in this 10-step reaction, how many ATPs are produced? Uh, if you see, let us go to the next slide. And see. If you look at this, uh, this is the chart, flow chart of glycolysis. If you see this chart, you'll know that uh, there are two steps in the whole process of glycolysis in which ATPs are produced. First one is uh, conversion of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate to 3-phosphoglycerate when ATP is produced and uh, in the conversion of phosphenyl pyruvate to pyruvate another molecule of ATP is produced. Uh, but uh, you have to consider that once this glycerol dihydrophosphate is formed, uh, each, each intermediate in the reactions you have to consider as two so <clears throat> therefore uh, here you will be getting two atp and here you will be getting two atp because two glycerol dihydrate phosphate will be metabolized so total four and one in ADH is produced in the conversion of glycerol dihydrate phosphate to one three source of glycerate by the enzyme glycerol dihydrate phosphate dehydrogenase and this uh, NADH, the reduced equivalence, this NADH, uh, we have two. So this two NADH will go to the electron transport chain and it will be oxidized to five molecules of ATP, 2.5 each from one NADH. So totally have nine ATPs produced. But in the process of uh, uh, we also have utilized two ATPs uh, in these two reactions. So net ATP production will be seven. Then fate of glucose 6-phosphate. What are the different fates of glucose 6-phosphate? Glucose 6-phosphate is, uh, it's a, a, it is in a branch point. It is in a branch point. So it can form so many other compounds. Uh, the glucose 6-phosphate, it can undergo this 
glycolysis process to convert it into to get it converted to pyruvate uh, two molecules of pyruvate or it may also uh, uh, it uh, can also go to the pathway of HMBS and pathway it can also go to urinary acid pathway uh, it can also go to glycogenesis it can also go to glycogenolysis and it can also form glucose through gluconeogenesis so these are the different uh, phase of glucose 6-phosphate then what are the different phase of pyruvate pyruvate in an aerobic condition pyruvate is converted to ester coa by pyruvate dehydrogenase complex enzyme and in in aerobic conditions and aerobic conditions this pyruvate dehydrogenase complex will be converted no no this pyruvate will be converted to lactate by the cytosolic enzyme lactate dehydrogenase so pyruvate is converted to ester coa it is converted to lactate pyruvate can be converted to oxalocetate by uh, carboxylation reaction biotin dependent carboxylation reaction catalyzed by pyruvate carboxylase and this pyru uh, and this oxalocetate can enter the gluconeogenesis pathway to get it converted into glucose it can also be converted to malate by malic enzyme pyruvate to malate by malic enzyme and this malate can enter the gluconeogenesis pathway this pyruvate can also be converted to alanine by transamination reaction and in bacteria this pyruvate can also be converted to alcohol so this is a different phase of pyruvate now atp producing steps of glycolysis we have already seen there are uh, two reactions which produces atp that is uh, one catalyzed by phosphoglycerate kinase and the other catalyzed by pyruvate kinase these two reactions produce atps so these reactions are examples of substrate level phosphorylation that means the atps are produced uh, within the reactions uh, AT, uh, actually the atps are produced in the uh, electron transport chain i mean in by oxidative phosphorylation in the electron transport chain but here in this case atps are produced in the reaction itself so they are called the substrate level phosphorylation atp consuming steps of glycolysis we have seen there are two steps in which uh, atps are consumed that is step one and step three step one catalyzed by hexokinase or glucokinase uh, in the liver and hexokinase in the muscle and another step catalyzed by phosphofructokinase in which fructose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate so these two steps are consuming atps Now, inhibit, inhibitions of glycolysis. The whole process of glycolysis can be inhibited by inhibiting this enzyme enolase, uh, which catalyzes phosphoglycerate, uh, conversion of phos two phosphoglycerate to phosphate and pyruvate. So, we, this uh, step has clinical importance uh, uh, that we see in the clinical practice. So, for the collection of uh, uh, blood. Uh, for stimulation of blood glucose we use uh, fluoride vials I mean, vials containing fluoride because this fluoride will inhibit this enzyme enolase and therefore the process of glycolysis will be stopped and therefore the blood that you have collected will represent the glucose content in the blood will represent the glucose content of the patient patients so now difference between hexokinase and glucokinase what are the difference between hexokinase and glucokinase hexokinase and glucokinase these are the uh, isozymes uh, hexokinase is seen in all the cells in the body whereas glucokinase is seen only in the liver cells or hepatic cells uh, hexokinase is uh, non-specific 
uh, it, it is uh, all the hexos all the hexos uh, it acts on all the hexos uh, sugars whereas glucokinase is specific only for glucose it can phosphorylate on the glucose and hexokinase can phosphorylate all the hexos uh, sugars the km km of hexokinase is low this means that i mean the km of hexokinase for glucose is low this means that it has got high affinity for glucose and therefore even in low concentration of glucose hexokinase will be saturated whereas glucokinase they have high km value this means that it has got low affinity for glucose then importance of 2,3-bis phosphoglycerate. What is this 2,3-bis phosphoglycerate? Uh, in certain conditions, like uh, adaptation to high altitude or uh, if the patient is anemic, uh, this 2,3-bis phosphoglycerate is produced from 1,3-bis phosphoglycerate. By the enzyme, this phosphoglycerate mutates. And this, the, what is the importance of this uh, compound 2,3 bis phosphoglycerate is that this 2,3 bis phosphoglycerate helps in unloading oxygen in the tissues in which the oxygen perfusion is low, in which the blood flow is low. So, in high altitude or in anemic patients, the oxygen, uh, uh, the blood flow is less to the tissues. So in that case, there is more unloading. I mean, there, there will be increased production of 2,3 uh, BPG and this will cause increased unloading of oxygen to the tissue. Now, <clears throat> this is associated with glycolysis. Uh, there are certain diseases, though they are very rare, uh, but uh, let us mention these diseases which are related to glycolysis. One important uh, disease is hemolytic anemia, which is caused due to the deficiency of pyruvate kinase. So, in, if there is deficiency of pyruvate kinase, there will be less production of ATP, and when there is less production of ATP, the RBC is will be destroyed therefore there will be hemolytic anemia uh, other diseases include a deficiency of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex enzyme which converts pyruvate to acetyl coa uh, though this is a very rare but if this pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is depleted or reduced in number then uh, the pyruvate cannot be converted to ester coa and instead this pyruvate will be converted to lactate by the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase and uh, therefore this will lead to lactic acidosis now what is Cori's cycle see in an uh, in an uh, exercising muscle or uh, in a severely exercising muscle uh, the glycolysis uh, produces lots of lactate because uh, the pyruvate produces as a result of glycolysis in this exercising muscles only 10% of the pyruvate can enter the uh, TCA cycle by converting into acetyl coa and the rest of the pyruvate is being converted to lactate by lactate dehydrogenase enzyme because there is anaerobic glycolysis is going on because there is so much of muscle contraction and the supply of oxygen is less so more of the pyruvate is being converted to lactate so there is increased lactate concentration in the muscle and this can lead to 
leptic acidosis. But in the uh, body, we have a system to prevent this hazardous uh, situation. So how does this uh, body uh, uh, prevents uh, lactic acidosis in exercising muscles? Uh, you know, lactate uh, can easily uh, travel the, uh, to this um, muscle membrane and it reaches the blood and in the blood, it travels, then, then, then from blood it will travel to the liver. And in the liver, this lactate will be converted to pyruvate by the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase. And then this lactate, pyruvate, then it can be converted to uh, oxalocetate or malate and then it will enter the gluconeogenetic pathways and then it can be converted to glucose. And this glucose again, it will go to the blood and it can again reach the muscle. Therefore, there is a cycle established between muscle and the liver. Therefore, uh, this uh, cycle is called Corey cycle after the name of the scientist Carl Corey and Gertie Corey, who were given our prize in 1947 for the discovery of this cycle. This cycle as yours, uh, as, uh, 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 this cycle, what is the benefit or what is the, yes, benefit of this cycle? This cycle assures that there is sufficient use of lactate that is produced in the contracting muscles. So, that is called a cycle. That's all uh, from this glycolysis pathway. These are the important questions that I have just discussed. Please remember this points. So thank you.